What's going on and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to add an image or a logo on top of your t-shirt inside DaVinci Resolve. Uh, I will do a disclaimer right here up front. This is not able to be done in the free version. So if you have DaVinci Resolve, not the studio version, you are not gonna be able to do this. However, if you do not have the free version you're wanting to learn anyways, tag along and learn something. Let's jump inside DaVinci Resolve and get going. First thing you're gonna need is a video clip of yourself or someone that you're wanting to use this effect on. I just have me editing at the computer. You're also going to need uh, some logos or images. I just have a PNG of my logo here as well as I have another one here that you cannot see because it is in black. But I'm just gonna be using the images I made for my channel. So first things first, we can do this in two different ways. You could do this inside the color page or the fusion page. I prefer doing it inside the Fusion page, and I'll give you a couple tips at the end why I prefer doing it that way, but I just think it's easier. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we are going to be on the video clip that we need. This one, I've already got it trimmed up. I'm gonna hop inside the Fusion page here. I'm going to go ahead and close that second monitor because we just need the one. And then here, we are going to need our Surface Tracker. So I'm gonna hit Shift Space Bar. It is gonna bring our search tool up. I am gonna look for Surface Tracker. We are going to add that right inside of our node tree right here and before we actually mess with any of this we need to do one thing and this is a tip uh any of these trackers specifically the surface tracker and davinci resolve it does not like tracking things that are flat so even if you've colored your image which i have not it's a little on the flat side i'm going to go ahead and add a color curves right here you could hit shift spacebar or use it right here in the shortcut I am going to go over here under the inspector and I'm gonna bring that pretty far down. I'm gonna crush it to where it's really not good looking uh, just so we have a really nice contrast on there. Then we're gonna go inside the surface tracker. We are going to go to the bounds and we are going to go ahead and just draw a square on my shirt, something like that. If you want to adjust it, you can. I think that's fine the way it is. We're gonna go to mesh. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and start putting all these little trackers on here. I think that's great. I like cranking it up just a little bit. We're just gonna go to 61 instead of 50. And then under track, I'm gonna click on there. I'm gonna go right down here to tracking behavior. And I am gonna go from faster to better because I want the best result possible. Then with it being at the front of my video clip, I'm just gonna go right here under tracker and I'm gonna hit track forward it's going to do its tracking process. It's gonna analyze it. Now, why this is tracking our image and analyzing it, let's talk about the sponsor of this video and that is Artlist. I've been using Artlist for a very long time now and I'm always blown away by the music, sound effects, and everything else they have on their website. Recently, they just upped their game even more. They've added templates inside Artlist. One of the things I love the most about it is if you click on a template, you can actually see what program it will work for and is designed designed for. There's been so many projects recently I need to pump out quickly and up the production just a little bit more. I jump on artlist.io, I find an amazing template, I download it, I load it into DaVinci Resolve, and I'm adding it to my project within seconds. I'm rocking and rolling and ready to go to the next project. Of course, I've got multiple plans, whether you're looking for just music and sound effects for social media, or you're looking for everything under the sun covered under one license, they have got you covered. I have a link in the description below that if you use that when you sign up, you get two extra free Three months when you sign up for a yearly subscription. Thank you so much, Artlist, for sponsoring this video and other creators just like me. After it's done, I'm gonna hit play. I'm gonna make sure it looks good. It All the points are locked on very good, even when I move my shoulders or shrug. Everything is locking on very good, just like we would want it to do. Perfect. Now, what we can do is we can delete that curves because we don't need that anymore. All the tracking information is locked on. You can see if I play it through, Everything is tracked a lot better. I've tried this without the curves step, uh, without adding that first, and it doesn't ever work right. Uh, it seems like it really likes a contrasting image. Now, what we need is we need to add our image next. Now, instead of just dragging the image in here and connecting it together, there's a couple things that I like to do. I like to go ahead and add a transform node, and then I like to grab my image and bring it in here as well. I'm gonna connect my 
image to my transform node and then I'm going to connect my transform node to the surface tracker and now that's locked in you can see it looks a little weird and it's being cut off we're going to fix that so inside the transform we're going to go ahead and just size it down a little bit now you can do a lot of this information that I'm doing right here right inside the surface tracker you can go the results uh, you can go down to the overlay placement go to reference image and you can grab it and move it in here I personally prefer to do it inside the transform node. Uh, it's just the way I like doing it, keeps things separate. Uh, I'm gonna size it where I like it, and I'm gonna go ahead and just rotate it just a little bit. I think it looks better rotated, uh, as well as if it's wonky or I wanna stretch it more, I can do that as well. I think that looks good. We can go back to our surface tracker, and then in the comp settings, I like to change it to something else. There's a whole bunch of ways you could do this. I personally found for the image that I'm using, I like darken, I think it looks the best. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways you can do that, uh, but I just like the darken one, and I like to turn the opacity down just a little bit so it looks like it's printed on there a little bit more. If we play that through, you can see that the fabric is moving really good with the image. Again, this may not work with every shirt. You may have to kind of play around with that, uh, but that works really well. Now, if we like it and everything looks good, fantastic, we could move on. However, this is one of the reasons I like doing it inside of the Fusion page. I'm gonna break that. I'm gonna have another transform node right here, and I'm gonna bring my image and connect it to that one. So instead of changing the image, I'm changing the transform node. And now in here, I can change the size as well as if I want it to stretch a little bit more. It's being a little distorted. We could bring it up just a little bit, something like that. Now, if we played that through, because all the information is the same, you can see the image is the only thing that's changed. Everything is the exact same. All the tracking's the same. It moves with the fabric just the same. And again, I'm not messing anything up in the transform node. So if I wanna go back to the other image, I de-click that, I add the new one, boom, it's done. None of that information has been moved because it's all held inside the transform node. That is the reason I really like using my transform nodes because I can put all the information I want in there. I could have like, 30 different images in here ready to go and swap them out if I wanted to. And the last reason I like doing this inside the Fusion page instead of the Color page is if we go to the Color page now, all of it is baked together. You can see it's just like that. So now if I want to add some curves or something like that, it's gonna affect the entire image and not just the image underneath or having to add another node on top of it. I think it's just nice and tidy. It looks better. Uh, sometimes I get a little overwhelmed with having too many nodes in my color tab, so I kind of like going about it this way. But there you go. That's how you track an image inside DaVinci Resolve to your t-shirt to get those sweet custom tees. That's it for me today. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment below. Let me know some other videos you would like to see in the future. You're amazing. I'm Darren Giant. See you next time. Peace.